Before we start today's video, of course I have to promote the stream once again, I know. Every single video for the past couple of days has been nothing but promotions for this stream. But this is such a big stream that quite frankly, I hope everybody tunes in. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, next Tuesday, May 3rd at 6.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Ohio slash Indiana election night stream will commence. In the description down below, the very first link will be to the stream. When you click the link, there'll be a button that says reminder. Click that button. When you do, you will get reminded when the stream starts. So again, this is a big stream. I hope everybody tunes in, share with your friends and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, all right, enough promotions. Let's get right into the video. Americanism, not globalism will be our credo, then we can be assured that other nations will not treat America with respect, the respect that we deserve. The Amer what is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American Politics, back in with a new video. And today, we have a major polling alert from the great state of Arizona conducted by the Second best pollster in the country, about to say first, but this isn't Richard Barris. The Trafalgar Group, also known as the second best pollster in America, just conducted a Republican primary poll in the great state of Arizona, and it's showing um, Trump's endorsement actually has an effect on this race. And today's video is to be discussing this poll, what it means, and also debunking for once and for all, Trump's endorsement doesn't matter. Carrie Lake or Blake Masters can't win. That's nonsense. Now, before we get today's video started, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash like down below, subscribe, share with the friends, hit the little bell, and yes, of course, go follow that mysterious Twitter account in the description down below. And uh, yeah, so let's get right into it, folks. It begins today, a huge poll, one of the biggest in the Arizona primary so far, has been released by Trafalgar, the second best pollster in the country, known for accuracy, known for not bullshitting people, and known for telling the truth. And they did the Arizona governor's race and the Arizona's Senate race, just a primary. So no Democrat primary, just a Republican primary. And look at this, the Arizona governor race, all right? This is a poll that everybody's anticipated that, oh, Carrie Lake, she can't get above 30%. People are seriously saying that. You go down here to the wiki. People are saying, oh, well, you see here, Carrie Lake can't crack 30%. It's over. Well, folks, the loser right, the elective bros, whatever you want to call those people, um, they got exposed hard as Trafalgar dropped a bombshell with Carrie Lake at 38% and up by 11 points. You heard that right, up by 11 against the supposed, you know, front runner in the race and Karen Robson, who by the way, Robson got exposed hard for essentially illegal fundraising activities. It was disgusting what she did. Essentially, she was getting these huge primary or fundraising numbers from out of state. Turns out she ran a scam and she got caught hard for it. What she did was she tricked old boomers across the nation to say, hey, click this button here and we're going to fight for Trump, which it really meant you're fundraising. You're giving me five bucks a month. So, uh, yeah, Robson's a fraud. And this poll has Lake up by 11. And people are saying that Trump's endorsement does not matter. That's bullshit. I am sick and tired of this narrative. Trump's endorsement doesn't mean anything. The Lake can't win. That Arizona's a neocon state. So this video, we'll be looking at it a bit more because people keep saying Arizona does not like Trump or the Republican Party in Arizona is not going to vote for Lake. Um, Lake's at 38%. And before the endorsement, she was at like 20%. So that alone estimates, you know, roughly a 20% improvement in Lake's number after Trump's endorsement. And what are these people saying that it's not a Republican or a Trumpian state, at least Republican Party isn't? Really? This was the primary result in 2016 in Arizona. 2016, 
with Cruz and Rubio still fighting. Look at this. Trump got 45%, almost 46% of the vote. Cruz got 27%. And you notice, 45%, Lake's at 38%. So doing some more math, her floor is potentially 45% of the vote in Arizona if every single Trump voting Republican in 2016 votes for Lake. And there's a good chance it happens. Even if every single, you know, other person voted for Lake, you still don't have the numbers because if Lake gets 45%, Robson would need to win every single undecided voter, win every single Matt Selman voter, and then you have a chance if she somehow gets 45%. You heard that right. If Lake gets 45%, Robson needs nearly every single other voter to vote for her. You see why this race is over. You see why Trump's endorsement ended this race. And sure, Robson's at 27%. She's spending millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. It's like, no shit, she's going to be at like 27%. But even, even then, this isn't the biggest part of the poll. This kind of just signifies, yeah, this race is over. Robson is going to need every single undecided, every single non-Trump voter in 2016, and then some, to potentially win this race. There's another part of this poll, the Senate race. And before we look at that, look at the polls. We're not going to look at the Trafalgar poll. Just ignore it. Just ignore the Trafalgar poll. Before the Trafalgar poll, Masters was at 9%, 9%, 10%. And Masters, or I should say Baran and Vitch was at 20, 20, 20. While Lamont, he was supposedly surging. And many people are saying, see, this is proof that Masters can't win. And I made a video on these polls saying, a lot of these polls seem very horseshit. All right, I looked inside the numbers. Yeah, some of those numbers made no sense at all. Then Trafalgar came out with a poll. Go up here. Masters at 19.5%. Yeah, without Trump's endorsement against the acting Attorney General and Mark Baranovich and Jim Lamont, who's spending millions upon millions of dollars. Yeah, he's at 19.5%. Essentially, nobody. You're telling me if Trump endorsed Masters, he wouldn't win. Bullshit. And Trump's essentially going to endorse Masters. And when that happens, yeah, this race is over as well. I mean, Masters at 19.5% against Bronovich, who should be an easy victory for him. If he just talked about, you know, we're going to reform election stuff or actually, you know, go after people in Arizona, he would win this race. He would have got Trump's endorsement the day he announced. But he was a coward. He didn't. He blew it. And you notice, his ceiling is only like 25%. Every single poll has him at like 25, 24, 25, 24. He's stuck. He screwed himself over, and Bronovich can now win. It doesn't matter. If Trump endorses somebody in this race, Bronovich is done. Now, for Jim Lamont, here's the issue with, you know, Lamont's number. Sure, he's at 25%. How much is that is just because people know him more? Seriously, think about it. Lamont has spent way more money than these other clowns or the other clown and Bronovich and the base candidate and masters. Yet he's at 25%. This once again proves just because you spend $15 million on a race, it doesn't mean anything. Sure, in increase your name recognition. That's why Lamont has been supposedly surging. Because Lamont of these three are most likely the most well-known Republican candidate currently. It's just a fact. If you spend $15 million on TV spending, people are going to see you more. That's just basic math. So with that in mind, Lamont's support is soft. He's at 25%. If he was truly surging with the amount of money he spent, he should be at least 30%. He's not. And this is why I think Master still wins. Even if Trump doesn't endorse him, Masters is increasing naturally. He isn't doing this garbage of, oh, I'm spending $20 million and sitting home. Masters has gone to every event, every debate, every forum, everything. He's shaking hands, talking to people. He's naturally increasing his support. 
while Lamont and Baranovich has sat home and just done Fox interviews all day. And they think that's going to be enough. It isn't. And that's why I think Masters still wins even without Trump's endorsement. And by the way, with Trump's endorsement in the Senate race, you want to know how big it is? Um, you know John McCain? The only reason McCain won in 2016, his nomination, was because a certain orange man decided to support him. Yeah, if Trump did not endorse McCain, instead endorsed Kelly Ward like he should have, Ward would have won this race. I mean, McCain only got 52%, and he essentially sat home the entire time. If Republicans, you know, or Trump endorsed Ward, Ward would have won easily. By a lot, because there were a lot of Trump voters that did vote for McCain. And if Trump endorsed McCain or Ward instead, Kelly Ward would have won this race. She would have been the senator. And we wouldn't have been in this situation with cinema. So, uh, yeah, as you can tell, Trump's endorsement does mean stuff. In Arizona especially. I mean, if it wasn't for Trump, McCain would have lost this race. It's just a fact. I mean, he couldn't even crack 50% without Trump's endorsement. If you endorse Ward, Ward would have won. So that's how powerful Trump's endorsement is. And that's why I believe Masters will be the nominee in Arizona. And Lake has sealed it up. She's already almost at 40%. The primary's months away. This race is over. It's over. And if Masters continue to have a good grassroots campaign, then Trump endorses Masters. He may get 50% of the vote. That's just a fact. And if you enjoyed this video, which I hope you did, smash like now below, subscribe, share with the friends, hit the little bell, and yes, of course, go follow that mysterious Twitter account in the description down below, and uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, we'll see you guys in the next video. Godspeed to all of you.